welcome to this week's Talk It Over. We're so glad you're here and I want to give a special welcome if you're just joining us for the first time. My name is Dave and I'm one of the pastors here and joining me today is Leanne, also one of the pastors and we're looking forward to having a conversation together. Yeah, it's going to be good. It was a great message. Oh, it was so good. I'm looking forward to what we get out of it. And if you're new to this, maybe just a little bit of an update, what we do is give you kind of an insight into uh, like a small group discussion, what we call a life group where we take questions called talk it over questions that we get from Life Church, our partner church. And then based on the message, you got some things where you can really dig in and get a little bit deeper into it and find a little bit more about each other. And so this kind of gives you an insight into what that might look like when you show up at a group where you catch up a little bit with how your week has been, and then you unpack what's been going on in the message. And so we'll give you a little piece of that. We hope that's really valuable for you as we're going through this. And if you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave them um, in the comments below the video as we go. Well, we want to start off a little bit with just kind of a catch up. So how's the last yeah. week been for you? Um, it was good. It was a lot of appointments. And so my week was just a little bit off, not really following the regular schedule because of that. But at the same time, sometimes those can be really, really stressful. And this week it was just, it went, just uh, rolled really nicely. So yep. it was good. That's kind of nice. Yeah. It wasn't one of those like stumble through it, this is not going well kind of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And my son, because he's seven, so he struggles sometimes when things get out of order. Or yeah. We're not following our regular schedule and he rolled really well with it all as well. Yeah. So it worked well. That's so nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because the kids can make a decision, right, about whether mm -hmm. this is going to be a good or a bad based on their response. And yeah, they love habits. Yes, they yeah, do. They really do. They love the routine. And so... As a parent, anybody would know, yeah, if you get your kids out of routine, it can really throw you off. Yep. That's really true for us too, um, where we get thrown out of routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know, for me, it's been uh, just a good week. It's a quiet week. A lot of office stuff this week. Um, just admin stuff and catching up and got some stuff done in the gardens and got that done. So I like that the weather has been better. Yeah. And so it's been better to be outside a little bit more. Nice and sunny and yeah. warm and yeah. Yeah. And I know you like that too. I do, yes. We kind of share that love of gardening. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been more on top of that. We were actually talking about fertilizers and oh. miracle Grow yeah. and right? All that kind yeah. of good stuff. And so I'm I'm getting into it. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Well, I'm one of those like Christmas shopping is starts in July kind of people. <laughs> and so <laughs> I like to have everything planned and organized. And yeah. then, I don't know, life just doesn't seem quite as overwhelming in that level. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm a little bit more go with the flow which sometimes works well, sometimes does not, just depends. Yeah. We were just talking about um, my son and his wife are going on vacation. And when we first started going on vacation, we did a real winged approach mm. and it was a disaster. Yeah. And so after that, we learned like, no, plan it all a lot in advance. And then when you get there, you could just kind of coast. Yeah, and enjoy your time there. Yeah, it's Put so in nice. this effort ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's true of anything in life, and that's true of our spiritual life too, right? If we put the time in, and that's what this is, taking the time to have a conversation. So I would encourage you, if you haven't seen the message yet for today, to go ahead and check that out. It's in that series, Being There, and it's called Moving Past Rejection, and that idea that we all face rejection in our lives. So let me just give you a couple of points that uh, Pastor Tim mentioned that I thought were excellent. He said two ways Jesus did not respond to rejection. Uh, he didn't retreat and he didn't retaliate. And I think those are pretty natural responses sometimes we have when we're faced with rejection. We want to back away. I see this happen so many times where people are like, that's fine, I'm going to distance myself or even just retaliate. Yep. And um, so Jesus didn't do that. How he did respond in terms of his rejection is he responded with love and he refused to give up and he turned his re rejection into resignation. Like, I am going to do this. He was resolved. And then allowed maybe the rejection to be a direction for where God was going to work. And I thought those are all amazing. And, and Tim unpacks those so well, gives some great stories along the way. And we'll talk about that as we get into this. And so I would encourage you to go and check it out um, as we go through. And the verse I want to highlight here is actually Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 from the NIV. And it says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Yeah. And in rejection, our temptation is to give up. And what we have to do is push through that and really get to that place of, um, no, no, I'm going to actually engage again. 
and not give up on what God's been doing. And so what we want to do is we want to take some time to go through the talk it over notes, uh, questions, and really dig into, okay, what was going on here? What did you get from it? Because we get a chance to learn from each other. Yeah. And so normally your life group is actually a ladies group, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We have five ladies right currently, and we all just love being able to get together and share. And we're sharing with your gender, and then it, it's a different level of sharing. We're like, yeah. women and men just share on a different level. And I don't know, I love it. But at the same time, if you were to show up, you would be like, this is a lot. <laughs> it's it just might, really good. It might be. Yeah. It might be a lot. Yeah, when guys talk about feelings, we will, but it's about this long. Yeah. Yeah. We get bored with that. <laughs> uh, so in ours, the Warriors group, uh, yeah, we had some great conversations, but uh, not as much in the feelings piece, a little bit of that. And you just get to know each other really well and build good relationships. And I love that. Yeah. And so that's the opportunity we have. All right. So we want to start it off with talking about, we're going to talk about rejection. Mm -hmm. So let's start with talking about acceptance. So tell me about a group or a time in your life where you really felt welcomed and accepted and included. Hmm. I think when we started coming to Life North Church, I just immediately felt accepted and a part of the group and i have had um past relationships with some of the members so i wasn't sure is this gonna work is this gonna be awkward is it gonna be okay uh -huh. and we came and just felt an immediate acceptance and who we were and what we were bringing and the place that we're able to just serve how god created us to serve and kind of work through that as well well, it's interesting, right? Because you come into that a little bit cautious because yeah, even though you've known people, sometimes it's the people that we've known that we face the most rejection from. And so is this going to be safe? Is it going to be okay? Yeah, yeah. And finding that it is, and so there's that sense of relief. Yeah, it was good. Because <laughs> when you're rejected by people that are close to you or that you know, it just hurts so much deeper. Mm -hmm. I remember um, that a few times in my life that stand out. Um, I was bullied a lot in school. And so when I was going into high school, I was like, oh, what's this going to be like? Mm. And for me, it was the high school group at church as well as at school. And I was worried about both of those because mm. I'd actually been bullied at a junior high high school group or a youth group. And I did not expect that. And it really threw me for a loop where, you know, getting picked on, like physically actually kind of beat up on yeah. uh, with a church group. And so when I went to the, another church and their high school group, I was really anxious about it and was accepted and it was amazing. And then when I went to camp, that was the next time uh, where we worked together for the summer and I did that repeatedly for years and really felt accepted. And then what we found here as a church, mm -hmm. I think has just been phenomenal. And so I really appreciate kind of the acceptance that we have here too. It really makes a difference when you experience that. Yeah. Have you ever met people that haven't experienced that? Yeah, but just, I don't know, more apprehensive. Yeah. And less free with their relationships. And it's harder to really connect with people and have that relationship go anywhere. It's kind of sad, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's a very lonely place. It is. And so, yeah, if you're in that place where you don't feel acceptance, you haven't experienced that in your life, then please reach out to us. We would love to be able to connect with you and help you to connect with somebody who actually cares about you and is wanting to receive you and accept you. All right. So let's go through these questions. If you're wanting, you can actually follow along. If you go to life.church, you can find the Talk It Over questions there under their life groups. And so usually we start off with which part of this message was most impactful for you and why? And that allows us kind of to dig in a little bit to like, because it hits us differently, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I love how he, um, Pastor Tim explained how Jesus responded to the rejection. I don't know that I've ever experienced a message that had done that so clearly. Mm. And I, I've known that Jesus had experienced rejection, but it was kind of like, okay, well, what do you do with it? And how he responded to the rejection with actually seeing this as a good thing and mm. um, not allowing that to just stop his ministry and he pushed through it and kept doing God's will through it and used it as a, his analogy of the welcome mat that you can still accept people and love them. And I know like that's something that's great to be able to talk about. And in theory, it's amazing, but in actuality, it's really hard to do. It is really hard to do. 
Yeah. When we face rejection, it's so hard to kind of like not respond in kind or to yeah. back away. And I love that. I think that's what really impacted me too, is the same thing that it's seeing Jesus from a more human perspective. Yeah. And we don't often get that. Right. And so to be able to relate to Jesus and be like, oh, that would be hard. Because he's reading the scripture there about like his family at first was kind of rejecting him and his position and thinking, wow, yeah, we reject my family. That would be so painful. Yeah. And uh, trying to relate to that a little bit because that's one of the hardest ones, right? Right. With our family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you're thinking about rejection, what are some things that thoughts or feelings that come to mind? Um, I don't say rejection. <laughs> Not quite Just, the answer you're looking for, is it? Think of rejection. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It feels lonely and like I'm not good enough. Um, yeah. it feels very devaluing. Like I've done something wrong that you don't want to be with me now. And I take it very personally. Have you experienced that before? Yes. Yeah. From friends, family. Yeah. And I'm sure I've rejected people as well. And it, yeah, it goes both ways. I yeah. think it's just a human thing yeah. to do and to have to experience. I think, um, obviously you've got a seven year old, my boys are a little yeah. bit older, but when you begin to see that for the very first time, your kids experiencing that, how oh, gut, it's so hard. gut wrenching it is, right? Yeah. Like you just want to protect them because you know how hard that is. Yeah. It starts really early. Yeah. And actually, as you say that last week we were out on the playground and my son experienced some rejection mm. and it was from an adult and I could see the adult's perspective of no, we're not going to do what you want us to do right now. And I was okay with it. Yep. But my son was like, no, this isn't okay. And at first I got like my mama bear came out of, how dare you say no to my child? And then yeah. I'm like, no, just because they're saying no to him doesn't mean they're saying no to you and it'll be okay. Yeah. And there's um, this report out that was saying that like when moms see their child rejected they actually feel that feel for themselves and so i just had to tell myself he's not re rejecting you it's not a personal thing yeah. and then we we're i was able to kind of talk my son through it otherwise i think i would have gotten really offended and just <laughs> how dare you say no well and to have that perspective of it's okay that they set the boundary it's not a personal rejection yeah and how do we interpret it yeah and that sometimes when it feels like rejection is not Right. And so Tim told the story of being rejected and asking a girl out for a date. Mm -hmm. Other guys would have said, and so I asked again and were persistent. Yeah. And for him, it was like, no, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do that again. That was too painful. And it's how we interpret it. Did she say, by saying no to me this time, did that mean every time? Yeah. Or was it really there was something going on? And it's the story we tell ourselves. And we talk about that a lot, don't we? Yeah, we do. What's the story we tell ourselves about why this happened? And we always sometimes put it on the worst motives for the other person. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the case. No. And in my son's example, like that family was just ready to be done playing at the playground and they're ready to go home in like two minutes. So adding another player to what they were doing did just didn't make sense. Yeah. But for a seven year old, they don't want, they're not able yeah. to understand it at that level. And how often we interpret it that way when we're facing and, rejection. Yeah. That it's the same thing. Someone needs to kind of talk us down and be like, no, it's okay. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. It's hard not to take that with you. Okay. So talk about a time when you felt rejected, how you handled it and would you do it differently? Hmm. What's something that you actually faced in rejection in the past? Like, how did you deal with that? And then what would you do going forward in the future? I remember in grade nine, I tried out for the high school soccer team and I loved soccer. I played it during the summer and the winter months too. Yeah. And to the point where I actually ended up killing my knees so I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't play anymore. Uh -huh. um, but anyways, I tried out for the team and I thought I was a shoe in So I don't, I was probably a little more confident than what my age said that I should have been trying out for this team against all these grade 12 high school girls who have played since they were on like the past few years yeah. on the team already. So I was hoping to get in to be part of their crew and uh, I didn't get accepted to the team. And so then um, there were only two other grade nine girls who actually got in on the team. Yeah. And I was so upset that I wasn't able to be a part of that group. Yeah. And I just kind of 
started isolating myself in grade nine and really struggled with it. And then it took a while for me to come up to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm going to use this. I'm going to work harder. And in grade 10, I'm going to make the team. But I actually didn't try out in grade 10 because I decided, that's it. I'm too good for soccer. I'm going to go play field <laughs> hockey. <laughs> so the following year, I went to go play field hockey. And I loved it. But then I was like, I really miss soccer. So I made the team again in grade 11. Okay. But I didn't even try out in grade 10 because I'm like, no, you don't want me. I don't want you. I'm going to reject you first. Yeah. Because it wasn't, it sounds like it's not just about not playing the sport. It's about the community I wanted to be a part of. Yeah. And then you didn't get to do that. Right. Yeah. I think oftentimes for me as a guy, it's the I'm missing out on the opportunity, not thinking about the community and the mm. relationships piece. So I guess that's one of the differences, right? For guys yeah. and girls and how you would approach it. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that experience in sports. So I wasn't too worried about that in terms of rejection. But um, I remember when I went to that junior high group at that church, I thought this is a church. This is a safe mm. place. It's going to be fine. And when I got there, it was awful. I was treated terribly um, and faced a lot of rejection. Like, you don't want me here, obviously. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is the place where for sure I should be. And I wasn't. And so I withdrew completely. I'm like, I'm not going to go back there. I'm staying away from it, which is not a bad choice. Mm -hmm. But we didn't go anywhere else. And it took me quite a long time. Uh, so it was like two years later that I finally went out to a youth group yeah. again at another church. So really shy about like, is this going to be okay or not? Mm, yeah. Um, I think going back, how I'd handle that differently is it's a story that Rick Warren likes to tell about uh, going to church even or going mm -hmm. out for a meal that you go to a restaurant. If you have a bad experience there, it's not like you're going to stop going out to eat, right? You're right. going to find a better place to go instead. Right. And that's true of churches, but it's true of relationships too. Just because somebody rejects you and says no to you doesn't mean somebody else won't be great. Mm -hmm. and really accepting of you. Yeah. And so I think that's what I would do differently. I needed the mom to come alongside, t uh, well, I guess 12-year-old me? Yeah. 11-year-old me and say, it's another group. It'll be okay. Mm. Yeah. And to try it again. Yeah. It's kind of weird to think through how that's going to be for your son at some point. Right? Yeah. Talking yeah. him through older stuff. Oh, yeah, mom, remember back when this happened and then that happened and you said this and I said that, like those yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next question for our talk it over is, uh, sometimes when rejection leaves us with an empty seat, God can use it as an open seat. Mm -hmm. Are there any open seats in your life right now? How could you invite others into this space? And maybe we should unpack the empty seat, open seat just a mm -hmm. little bit. Do you want to explain a little bit, you think, what Tim was saying? Um, well, it's just like if somebody leaves you or says no then there's an open space that you have an opportunity to fill that with um, that somebody else can, or something else can come into your life and God can use this as an opportunity to really bless you and maybe yeah. God is even protecting you from something that could have been a lot worse yeah. by the change of the relationship or yeah. the denial for that opportunity. The sting of rejection is not much compared to what could have been right. if it had continued. Yeah. Yeah. And that idea that I guess you have a choice when you're rejected that way and you've got that open space in your life, you could either invite somebody into it or we build a wall, build right? Yeah. And like, I'm going to make it smaller and protect myself. Mm -hmm. And you see people that keep doing that over and over because of rejection and then their life becomes very small. And they miss out on all these amazing opportunities and relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try going out for another team. I'm not going to invite somebody else in. And how much they suffer because of that. And life becomes very lonely yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really tragic. And so there's an opportunity that God is saying to us, okay, maybe you face some rejection there. You've got some space in your life. Mm -hmm. um, will you view it as being open? And so for you, would you say you have an open space in your life? I think so. Um, with my son, he's had a lot of medical stuff and the first four years of his life, he still has medical stuff, which is fine. Yeah. But then because our medical needs have changed, then our life has changed and the involvement that we need of people in our life mm. is now different. And so it's not that these people are saying or rejecting us saying, no, I'm never going to be with you. It's just it's almost like it's just a natural rejection. 
in this situation, I guess. Like the season is over. The season is over. Yeah. Yeah. So they're moving on and they need to, but now it's okay. Then who are we going to turn to? And the relationships change. And so how do we navigate that? How do we still trust even though things have changed and for my son especially helping him to kind of talk through that as an adult i understand for emma it's a little bit different it is it's kind of weird isn't it because then was the relationship about the interaction was taking place or were you viewing it more as a friendship and if the need is gone then suddenly what about the friendship yeah is that kind of the struggle i i think so um more so maybe for him okay although i don't know we've established a great relationship with the person that i'm thinking of anyways yeah um and it's not like they're fully out of our life we, we just don't see them as frequently yeah so it's changed. So it's just changed it's changed yeah and so is that a form of rejection do you not that i think it is but do you, yeah. does it feel that way Sometimes it does. Yeah. When, especially when um, I will ask, hey, can you come and hang out for whatever reason? And, well, I'm busy with yeah. something else I need to be busy with. Yeah. Like, it's okay. That makes me sad, but okay. Right, because they fill their life with other things. Other things, yeah. So they had an open space because the need was less with you guys. Yeah. And now it's been replaced. Yeah. So what's the open space for you then? You've got more availability, more freedom, more relational space. Like, what does that look like for you? I think it's more relational space Mm. Um, rather than investing into that relationship. Now it's I've got time and space I can be taking that to invest into other places. And um, God's been kind of knocking on my heart, being like, you need to connect more with your life group. Mm. and stay connected more so with them um and also with my immediate family and giving opportunities for us to connect on a different level than what we have been yeah so so maybe to step a little bit more into those relationships yeah okay yeah i've been thinking about this open seat concept because i think for me it's the same it's that relational space that's been freed up in my life and what am i going to do with that and so i was reading about online uh, these people that said, we don't meet enough new people. We've, we've withdrawn so much that we're uh, not interacting. And so what they did is they would set up a table and invite like 15, 20 people that they just, they'd met but didn't really know hmm. to come for dinner. And so I was thinking about that. Like we could set up a couple, of, and they do it out, outside, set up a table for 12, invite like 10 new friends yeah. and uh, potential friends and come and just get to know them and interact with them a little bit. Because you never know with that space in your life what that next friendship or relationship right. might be. And if we're so busy filling with what we've already had, then we miss out on what could be going yeah. in the future. And then it also takes some initiate and intentionality from those people that you invite for them to say yes. Yeah. And maybe they're saying no because they don't have space or time or like... Right. It's not a a personal thing for you, but you're also opening yourself up for rejection. For rejection, (laughs) yeah. Offering that as an opportunity for them. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, And it's every time we reach out, there's an opportunity to be rejected. Every time we invite someone to come and join us. And so maybe that's a good thing. There was a guy, uh, Jean Zhang, that talked about rejection. Remember he did Mm -hmm. 100 days of rejection where he actually learned to look at rejection differently um, based on purposely trying to get people to reject him a hundred days in a row. Yeah. And what an experience that was. And some him. of his asks were fairly like, I'll go up to a stranger and ask, can I have a thousand dollars? Yeah. No, you cannot. <laughs> like, it's an expected yeah, rejection. Yeah. And then he was surprised by sometimes the acceptance he got. Yeah. And so again, it's perspective of, are you expecting rejection? Are you expecting acceptance? Or how are you going to deal with it? Mm-hmm. And so I kind of think that's what I like to do is put myself out there a little bit more and, um, maybe allow people to say no, but then look for the yeses yeah. and look for the opportunities in that. And then when the yeses come, they're so much sweeter too. Yeah. Yeah, it is because you're, you're proud of yourself for taking that step and actually asking. And yeah. then you know that there's a, they intentionally have said yes. They're not saying yes just because 
I just felt like that was the the right thing to do or uh, the obligation to say it's yes. It's not an expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I know it's easier, right? With people you don't know as well and know that level of rejection is not so bad. Right. Uh, whereas it is with closer. But I think that having that open seat and saying, maybe there's a new person we could meet that we can build a relationship with, uh, that'd be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the introverted side. So I love to be with people and new people, but I find that really exhausting. Yeah. Um, you more introverted or extroverted? I'm more extroverted, but yeah. then I also have my introverted times where, okay, guys, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I need you're, to you're... sign off for a little while. I'll be back. So the so. idea of inviting a bunch of people you don't really know very well over for dinner, would that be like exciting or intimidating? Both. Okay. I think. Because of the rejection piece that goes with that? Um, yeah. Like if, if I knew that they all really wanted to come, even before I asked them, I'd be so much more excited. Okay. <laughs> Whereas if they're, um, I don't know that they really want to have a relationship with me or maybe it's just out of their comfort zone or for every reason the date doesn't work. Yep. And then it's harder for me to say, yes, I'll ask them. So the rejection piece is big. It is, yeah. Okay. So then what's the step you think that God's asking us to take about how do we deal with rejection the way Jesus did? What does that look like to put ourselves out there or to face it differently? How do we make a change? Hmm. I think for me, it's learning to trust again. Hmm. And just because somebody in the past has rejected me doesn't mean that these new people are going to. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, just the, the it's it was a season that we were together, and now that season's over. Yeah, and it's not personal. Yeah, find some, find some closure with that, so that I can move on and not get stuck with it. Yeah, and which Jesus was a great model of that. Like, don't mm-hmm. get stuck, because in the end, uh, it's kind of like not forgiving. The only person that really gets hurt is you, right? Because we lose out on potential for the future with other people in our lives. Yeah, but you also have to see your worth, and I guess if you don't see your worth then you think you're never going to get accepted. Right. And so this loss is significant because I can never replace that person. And God's saying, no, there's an opportunity and I've got good things planned for you. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Like I've got more people. I've got great relationships that you'll really enjoy. Don't miss out on it. Right. Yeah. So believe in that. That's something that God's been challenging me on. I'm like, God, why am I struggling with these certain relationships and the lack of those relationships so hard? And then, I don't know, I feel like it was the past few days, actually, where God really revealed that it's because they made you feel special. And there's a quote from Arthur Brooks in one of his recent books that says that people want to feel special more than they want to feel happy. And I was like, I don't actually fully understand that quote, but apparently it's really good. So I guess I'll look into (laughs) it a little bit more. So I don't know, I've been thinking about it a while. And then I'm like, actually, that that person made me feel really, really special. I didn't actually feel Mm -hmm. happy. And so I didn't realize I was doing it, but I was searching after things that would really make me feel special. And so God's like, you should be looking to me for (laughs) that and being happy with your worth and who I say that you are rather than looking outwardly to these different relationships to fulfill you. That's so good because then someone who manipulatively makes us feel special could really control us Mm -hmm. and if someone cuts us off for another reason yeah you feel lost yeah yeah i love that special not happy yeah and how significant that can be and then so other people in your life um and in our lives if we make people feel special how powerful that is Mm -hmm. that actually really helps to build them up and feel like wow this is meaningful yeah so good. Well, I love the time we get to spend kind of walking this through because I know I love listening to the messages and, but there's something you get when you have the conversation that just takes yeah. it to a whole nother level. Yeah. And so Leanne, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you guys for being a part of this too. Mm-hmm. All of those questions, if you want to share something in that, please do. You can put it in the comments below and we always check that and we'd love to get back to you about it. If you'd like to be involved in a life group, then you can email us at info at life Yep. And we'll follow up with you. Actually, Leanne would be following up with you uh, to get you connected. Or if you'd like to start a group of your own, 
All it takes is two friends. And so you get together with two friends, two family members, and we'll provide whatever support you need. We can give you the questions. We can give you direction on where to go next, all that kind of stuff. And that would be helpful for you. It mm -hmm. is just so valuable to be able to talk things through with people and to get more meaning out of it. So thanks for being a part of this. If you want, um, make sure that you like and subscribe, share it with somebody else that you think would benefit from it. And as we know, we do all this because we know whoever finds God finds life.